Hello, everyone. My name is Alan Potcotter, and you're listening to Call Talk for January 17, 2018. Today's topic is agent and agent engagement and empowerment processes and technologies that work. If you're listening live, we invite you to be part of the show and ask questions. Here's how to do it. Email me at alan at benchmarkportal.com. I want to remind everyone that all of our shows are archived and available to listen to at benchmarkportal.com any time of the day. And now I would like to introduce the host of Call Talk, Bruce Belfiore. Thank you, Alan, and welcome back to Call Talk, everyone. Buy-in from your people is so important when you're a manager, yet it's not always easy to obtain. You can't simply promulgate something and expect everyone will enthusiastically fall in line and understand how it empowers them. When I'm at conferences, I find that this is one of the issues managers always want to share stories and tips about. It's really a perennial hot topic, and there are always good experiences and suggestions our listeners can learn. And that's why we've brought in an experienced manager for you to talk about this, Maureen Lewandowski, Director of Operations at Delta Dental of Wisconsin. She'll talk about agent engagement and empowerment. Welcome to the show, Maureen. Thanks, Bruce, for having me. I'm really excited to be here today to talk about agent engagement and empowerment and how important it is um, in, in call centers. Perfect. Okay. Well, we're excited, too, and I'll, I'll give our listeners a bit of background on you. Maureen Lewandowski is the Director of Operations at Delta Dental of Wisconsin, located in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. In her current role, Maureen oversees claims processing, customer service, data entry, and benefit administrative services. In her 12 years in the call center industry, Maureen has become well-versed in the science of call center staffing, staff management, lean methodology, and project management. And currently, Maureen is pursuing her MBA through University of Wisconsin-Madison School of Business Executive MBA program, and she was just telling me she's going to be going down to South Africa with her schoolmates uh, later this year, so it sounds like a lot of fun. So really, we're happy to have you here, Maureen, and let's start with a basic question. Can you tell us why it's important to engage and empower call center agents? Well, Bruce, it all comes down to engaging and serving our customers. We have to engage and empower your agents first. Many years ago, we recognized that customers want to reach a person quickly, tell their story, get to a reasonable resolution, and be done with the call. To that end, we built a very rigorous training curriculum and business model that resulted in first call resolution near ne- nearly 99% of the time. Wow, that's exceptional, 99%. First call resolution. Now, that's considerably above industry average. Yeah, well, it took a lot of work. Our agents were well-trained and empowered to reach solutions, which led to high customer satisfaction and agent job satisfaction. Our reputation as a first-rate customer service center felt good. However, we only had anecdotal indications of success. So we realized we needed some analytical structure and some external validation that we were doing a good job. So we decided to benchmark against our industry and go after certification, as you know. As we prepared for this, we knew the agent engagement in enhancing their empowerment was critical to achieving qualifying statistics. Not only did this help us reach the performance metrics to attain certification, we have been able to maintain our performance over time. Keeping our agents engaged and motivated has been key through the entire process. Yeah, no, it certainly would be. And Well, can you tell me a little bit more about how you empower and engage your agents so that they're able to hit those really high metrics? Sure. At the start of our initiative, we gathered the team together and had a healthy conversation about what we were doing and what was expected of them. We first explained the opportunity and then talked about the process, collection of data, reports, measurements, metrics, and what it would take to move the needle to achieve qualifying metrics. Now, with this background and comprehensive information, we asked the team if they wanted to engage in the process and pursue certification. They responded with a big yes, and we were off and running. This engagement of our agents from the very start of a change journey was really key for each agent to understand how they individually impact the results of the entire team. When agents understand the significance of their decisions, they gain a deep and sincere appreciation for their actions. 
Yeah, Maureen, these are great points, uh, particularly the individual responsibility that's so important. And I, I just want to reach back and underline something you said earlier about customer engagement, because there's a, a transitive principle going on here. Uh, I call it a transitive principle. It's really empowering and engaged an agents uh, will translate into engaged and satisfied and loyal customers, uh, because uh, they'll be like, you know, they will like interacting with competent, confident representatives. And all of this, uh, at the end of the day, builds value for your customers and your employer, really whatever sector you're in, whether it's a private sector or government sector or uh, nonprofit. So uh, this is great stuff. Well, shifting gears a moment to technology, I know that many centers use technology to help them stay on track in terms of the presence, the performance, the results elements uh, that are really so key to excess, success. So did you have some scheduling or other technology support in this regard? Yes, we did, and it actually helped us through the process quite a bit. Um, take pay time off, for example. We found that by empowering the team to self-schedule PTO through our system, um, our agents felt more in control, which they really liked. Um, they could also watch real-time stats via their dashboard on their desktop. And we also have an online knowledge base that is easy to navigate, which they helped to develop. Um, we also made sure that along the way, we were very cognizant to celebrate our successes um, with different activities to keep everything fresh. It also kept them motivated to sustain these high met metrics year after year. Mm, that's great. Great stuff. Well, empowering through information is really so important. Um, and Maureen, could we hear more uh, about this? You know, I, I'd like to hear more about your self-scheduled PTO in particular. Sure. Well, our leadership on the team had done a lot of research to understand the workforce dynamics in our center. And with knowledge, um, with that knowledge we gained, we have staff to make sure that we have a certain um, capacity always built into um, whatever volumes we're expecting. So based on capacity allowance, we have built a self-governing PTO calendar that agents use to enter their PTO for any workday. The calendar date stamps each entry, and agents immediately see if their entry um, is within the available time off. And if not, it is labeled as a possible alternative. Because they have immediate insight without having to go through a formal approval process, they are more focused on day-to-day -day work and not distracted by concerns about um, waiting for approval for time off. In an over-schedule situation, the team works together to make adjustments, and I think this is something that is really key. Um, you know, team members working together to solve a problem, um, and it happens a lot in our center where maybe somebody needs a day off. Um, they can see who else already has the day off, and then they can work together, and maybe that person who originally had the day off says, you know what, I really don't need that. And so they work through it together, and they're empowered to do that, which I think makes a big difference. Oh, that, that's huge, yeah. That, that's what I wanted to hear from you, too, is that uh, the agents are empowered to manage their time off requests, uh, but they know that they are, as a team, responsible for ensuring adequate coverage. So in some cases, you know, you cover my back and I'll cover yours, and uh, that helps to build team spirit, too, as we all know, those of us who've been involved in athletics. Um, <laughs> Right? I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's so important. Uh, tell us a little more about your agent dashboard. Love to hear about that. Sure. Well, like all call centers, agent activity um, is measured on key performance indicators, and Delta Dental of Wisconsin monitors performance with two main um, key performance indicators, um, which we call occupancy and efficiency. So the stats on our dashboard are refreshed every hour on the hour, and the dashboard is placed somewhere where an agent can decide how often they want to view it or not view it. So um, agents have the opportunity to check their stats, you know, like I said, as little as much as they would like. Um, we have some agents who check frequently throughout the day just to make sure they're hitting their measures at all time, while others just check once daily just to that little indicator, am I on track or not. We learned that providing such tools and asking agents to use those um, that help them meet their goals reinforces our corporate get, uh, value of personal empowerment. That's For example, yeah, you know, it, it really a lot of it comes down to culture. And you know, let me give an example. Um, agents know they have to meet the efficiency target. Their total number of calls divided total um, after call work time needs to be around 21 seconds in order to meet our metric. If they see on the dashboard that they are above that for some reason, they're making a decision about how to adjust their processes to meet the target. 
um, simply making our call stats available caused an immediate 20% um, efficiency gain throughout the entire center. So it was a big deal. Um, mm. We've even found it's affected the new hires. You know, new hires are meeting requirements sooner in their training than ever before. Agents are not having to wait for a supervisor or for a coaching session to have the ability to make decisions in just their own performance. You know, your point about culture is so important, and also bringing in the, the new uh, agents uh, fits in perfectly with that because the culture needs to be taught from the start. And if uh, they are brought into the culture and they understand what it is, then it's not something that has to be added on afterwards or changed to afterwards, which is always so much more difficult. It's kind of baked in from the very beginning. And anyone who doesn't fit that culture at the beginning is likely to leave, uh, and you'll end up with those people who will fit with the culture and will work with it. So that's great. You know, it, it brings to mind a, a story, which we're talking about, too, giving the information results in people being responsible and accountable, et cetera. Uh, we had a colleague who worked for AT&T for many years, and she was given responsibility for one of their, at the time, I think it was like 23 or 24 call centers in the United States. And uh, this call center, according to the metrics, was uh, third from the bottom in terms of performance. And so I said, Catherine, what did you do? And she said, you know, Bruce, all I did was to let people know where they stood. They didn't know. Nobody had ever told them <laughs> that they were third from the bottom. And she just gave them that information, told them where they needed to be in terms of getting to the top, and within a year they were third from the top. I mean, can you imagine third from the bottom and third from the top? So uh, it's very powerful what you're talking about is the information, the, the empowerment that comes with information is really, really great. So, well, earlier uh, you mentioned another tool, an online knowledge base that your agents uh, help develop. Uh, can you tell us about how this has engaged and empowered your agents? Sure. You know, so a searchable knowledge base is something agents need to feel ownership of so they can quickly find information that allows them to make decisions and help out the customer. Over the last few year, years, we realized really our reference site had become inadequate, and it was evident that we needed a complete overhaul, so we undertook that project. Um, so as part of our initiative to make things easier for our agents, we involved the entire team in a lean project. Oh, okay, a lean project. Could, could I just uh, interject here and ask for a definition of lean for those listeners not familiar with it? Sure. You know, lean is really about um, reducing waste in a process. So uh, oftentimes it is looked at as a manufacturing tool, but has a lot of application in the service industry. For example, you know, when you look at a process of how agents take calls or maybe how they're handling calls or the structure of their call, you can look at that and say, is there waste in the process? Is, you know, are we moving too much? Uh, how long does it take for them to go from step A to step B or to look up information that's needed to answer a response? And if you can whittle that down, you kind of the waste out of the procedure and make them all lean, which in turn makes you more efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a very important uh, information, and it's the sort of thing, I mean, different uh, people call it different things, there are different acronyms, uh, and a lot of people right now are into figuring out the customer journey um, and going through each piece of that process to find out where there's fat that can be taken out or inefficiencies, et cetera. But uh, whatever you call it, uh, and our listeners certainly can look up online for the various different kinds of things. Um, including lean, then this would be a good thing for everybody to do because it does help to uh, uh, focus you on efficiency. So uh, thank you very much for that. Sure, yeah, and you mentioned customer journey mapping, and you know, lean and customer journey mapping really do go hand in hand together. So looking at the customer journey and finding out where maybe there's too much effort spent on the customer side is part of that lean process in removing waste. So it may be not just waste within your own organization, but it might be waste from the customer perspective of wasted time looking or trying to find information. So our project in particular, we focused on um, access to information and how long it took agents to access the information. So our overall project took us four months, and all agents actively per participated multiple times. Um, they gave us information on input on layout designs, context structure, and feedback loops. 
And because our agent's feedback was applied, the site became a tool that they were not forced to use, but it was a tool they built to help them succeed. It provides quick self-service to accurate information and virtually eliminates question referrals to a supervisor, which can really delay the resolution um, for the customer. Right, to keep, right. No, that's yeah. a great point. Yeah. And, you know, to keep the site fresh, you always worry you put up a tool and, you know, maybe there's um, the worry that it will become outdated. But built into the process was, um, you know, a way for agents to submit suggestions for changes and continual improvement. The significant element here is that we acted on the feedback that our agents gave us and continue to act on it um, daily when they provide suggestions. And that continues to make it their tool, and they know that their voice is being heard. Yeah, this is important. Uh, knowledge management system is not a one-shot thing. It's really a living, breathing uh, tool that has to be uh, fed and nurtured and uh, paired back and everything else. It's like <laughs> a garden that has to be really taken care of on a regular basis. And, um, yeah, so just to give you an example that I know of from a, a large uh, company uh, that's in the copier business, um, they had these large machines, and um, what they did, because they were finding it hard to keep up with all the changes that were coming through, et cetera, and their agents who were very highly qualified, most of them had, in fact, been field service people who then came into the call center, um, they would create things that they called white sheets. And the white sheets were actually uh, write-ups that they did on – new questions that nobody had ever answered before and that they had to find the answer for. And they took responsibility for them. They actually would write them up, uh, they would sign them, and then they'd get it signed off by the appropriate people inside the organization and back at home office just to make sure that it was the right information. But this created an incredible sense of engagement and ownership on the part of the agents. So what you're doing is exactly the same thing. It creates a real sense of uh, engagement and ownership uh, that will make people feel much closer to the, uh, uh, the, the their knowledge base and to the information that they're giving to the customers. So, well, these three key ingredients to the team's achievement of, uh, in your case, you've got center of excellence certification, which was great. Uh, you know, it certainly shows agent engagement and empowerment, and it's all pretty serious business. Uh, but the fourth ingredient you mentioned was celebrating successes, which is a great thing to remember. Uh, can you tell our listeners more about that? Sure, yes, yeah, and this change journey, you know, was serious business, but you also have to remember to celebrate your successes and milestones along the way. Um, so one activity I can explain is that we recently completed um, – was called Building on Success. And so the purpose of the activity was to celebrate quality and extraordinary customer service. So our individual team members were awarded a Lego piece for a call handled with extraordinary tone when they received a compliment from a caller or when their quality assurance score was 100%. Also, if they were observed going above and beyond normal duties, they may have received a random Lego piece as an additional award. Um, so not only individuals received it, but they work together as a team as well. So Lego pieces were given in um, if service level guarantees were met. And then just for fun, we did some random things such as on Valentine's Day, we gave out a red Lego piece to everyone, or we'd have a search and find and say, go out to our knowledge base and search for this information. And if you can find it, we'll give you another Lego piece. So as the activity progressed, each team member was building something with their Lego pieces. And the end figures were actually quite creative and unique. Um, we actually decided that we would put them on display for the entire company to, to see because they really became symbols of the excellent work that our agents do day in and day out. And finally, to wrap up the activity, we took pictures of their creations and gave each agent a Lego pen as a reminder of the fun and rewards for excellence. Um, the Lego supply was then collected, and we actually donated it to charity, which was another win because the team enjoyed paying forward the benefit of their successes. That is a great story. Fabulous. And, you know, you can think about the hospitals and uh, children's hospitals and other places where they would love to have that kind of uh, Lego supply uh, from uh, people like yourself. So the, the, you've got the full circle here. You've really got the concept. You're building, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. You know, they're building with the Lego pieces, so that's a great sort of analogy for the whole thing. They're having fun with it and uh, showing creativity, which is something that uh, people in call centers oftentimes are yearning for. 
Uh, I was in one center where at, um, at uh, Halloween time, they actually brought in a bunch of pumpkins and let people make these uh, pumpkins, and they got very creative with those. So there's a lot of things that can be done like that, and I think your story is uh, is one that a lot of uh, the listeners can probably uh, latch on to. That's great. Um, well, good. Um, let's see. The It's quite a story of how you and the uh, Delta Dental of Wisconsin customer service team approached a, a real challenge, integrated your corporate values, uh, and uh, were able to achieve Center of Excellence certification. Very, very good. Uh, thank you so much for all that. And I noticed that Alan has some questions for you. So I'm going to hand it over to Alan now to, uh, to ask those. All right, we've got a couple of questions here. The first one is from Pat. Was your agent morale already pretty high, or did, did you have to turn it around before you launched this initiative? Any turnaround advice for those who need it? Well, our agent morale was actually already pretty high when we launched this initiative. However, there's always a chance for morale to dip when your changes are being implemented. My advice is to include your team when making decisions that directly affect their work. The team knows their work the best and will have good ideas on how to improve. I think what you need to do is explain the overall goal and let the team determine how the goal will be achieved. That way, empowering them to make the decision um, to make the change. Yeah, I think the communication of things here is so important, uh, Pat, uh, you know, because letting people know in a high-performing situation that they can do it is uh, important because they've obviously done things. And, um, you know, you, you should also, though, get out there the fact that uh, as soon as problems arise that they see, they should let you know about it. Um, and perhaps this is even more important in those situations that are more turnaround. Uh, because you ask for advice on, you know, for those who need to turn things around. Um, make sure that you are seen as somebody who's gathering information on things that aren't going wrong and then actually doing something about it. And doing something about it in as open a way as possible so that people can see that you're a problem solver and their lives are going to be better as a result of your intervention. I think that in many cases... Uh, People feel either that management doesn't care, doesn't understand, or doesn't have any power to do anything. Uh, whereas it, it doesn't take all that much to start uh, instituting programs of the kind that Maureen has been talking about, um, showing the kind of attention to them, bringing the morale around. I mean, really, the whole morale thing is the subject of other call talks that we've had, but a uh, very important area, Pat. So. Um, you know, if you have other questions on it and want to talk about it, please let me know. But uh, key to making sure to, to make sure that the um, the morale is where it needs to be in order to move forward. So, thanks for that question. Oh, back over to Alan. Yes, the next one's from Barry. What was the hardest part of the process? Any pitfalls that we should be aware of? Yeah, and Barry, that's a, a great question. Um, the hardest part of the process for us was dedicating the time to make the necessary changes. You know, when you think about um, the time it takes to, you know, maybe take your agents and go through a lean journey to update your knowledge base or to have them give input on creating a dashboard or a PTO calendar, that all takes time. And what we're all trying to do in a call center is make sure that our customers are getting serviced in the um, most efficient way possible. So sometimes that's hard to balance. My advice is to be, realis be realistic about the time it will take to implement new processes and for agents to adapt. You know, having a well-laid-out plan with expected deliverables, deliverables will make all those changes attainable. Mm -hmm. You know, here uh, I might add something, Barry, and that has to do with the Valley of Tears phenomenon. And you may have uh, seen this in uh, some of your readings, but you've got the morale uh, curve, if I can put it that way, that when there's a new initiative that's uh, announced, it might be a new initiative on technology, it could be a, a merger with another company, it could be a management change, all this sort of thing, and it's presented in a very positive way with all of the good things that are going to happen. You have this upswing in morale. And then as the reality of the situation, because, you know, uh, the world is the world, and there's always challenges, and there's always things that go wrong, right? And so... 
you, you see this dip in morale, and then it goes down, and then you kind of work through the problems, and the curve goes back up again. And uh, some managers that I've worked with have even had uh, have even decided that it's a good idea to share that curve with their people in advance. Okay, it's a courageous thing to do in a way, and say, hey, look, you know, we're really excited about this. And uh, where this is all kinds of good things are going to happen. But look, life is life, and some things are going to happen along the way. We should anticipate that, okay? And by anticipating it and by giving heads up on it ahead of, you know, as soon as possible, as soon as they arise, we can cut that dip to a minimum. We can't eliminate it maybe entirely, but we can cut that dip to a minimum and uh, we'll come out the other side more quickly. Um, so that's sort of a way of giving people a heads up, making sure that uh, they don't get overblown expectations and uh, they're realistic. That was Maureen's word, to have realistic expectations, and that uh, they know that at the other end uh, the rainbow is coming, right? <laughs> Eventually it is coming. <laughs> so just, just a thought there. Um, Alan, did you have anything else there? Yeah, we got, yeah, we got one more question from Rosa. I really like the technologies you mentioned. Are they expensive? Well, actually, Rosa, most of the technologies that we implemented, um, such as the agent dashboard I mentioned and the PTO calendars, we developed internally by collaborating with our IT team. Um, these weren't large projects, but I think there was a definite benefit to having these built in-house. The biggest benefit is having a technology that fits our exact needs and ties directly to our KPIs. So sometimes we often look, you know, we need some big technological solution to make these things happen. But, you know, what we found in these cases was that we had the information, and by just using a little bit of um, collaboration with our IT team, we developed something that was very specific to us, and that helped us um, be able to look at our own KPIs and indicators of success and really we can then change on the fly anything that we need to if, you know, things change and we need to reassess, we can do that with the tools that we've built. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good, great question, Rosa. Uh, there's a lot that can be developed in-house, and there is also a lot that is off the shelf. Uh, there are certain things, for instance, if you decide that one way to build the uh, kind of morale and situation in a, you know, uh, you know, good situation that Maureen's been talking about is through gamification, for instance. Uh, there are gamification uh, tech, uh, technologies that you can get for free on the Internet, and there's others that you can pay for. So there's really quite a bit of uh, variation in the technology that's av available and the cost of that technology. Uh, so what you need to do is to see what is actually going to work for you, That what is it that you want to uh, bet some, um, some of your budget on, and also talk to people who've tried them out, where if you're talking to a vendor, for instance, of any of these technologies, be sure and ask for references. And don't just use those references to call people up and say, were you happy or not happy? Ask them actually about their experiences. See if their uh, situations are analogous to yours or very different from yours, and try to find ones that are analogous to yours and get tips from them. It's really a great way of uh, leveraging experience that somebody else already has and then being able to take that and make it your own. So, okay, very good. I think uh, we've come to the end of our, our half hour, so it's been a great show. Thank you very much, Maureen. Really appreciate those insights. They've been great. Uh, any, any last words of wisdom for our audience here? No, I, I don't think so, but uh, thank you for having me and letting you share um, our story, and hopefully um, those listening um, have found a few, few tidbits that they can take and, and use in their own organization. Uh, I'm sure they have. Uh, this has really been an information-packed uh, half hour, so I really appreciate it. And with that, I'll hand things back over to Alan to wrap things up. Thanks again, Maureen and Bruce, for your insightful discussions on the show today. Be sure to join us next month for, for another great show and look at our huge selection of archived shows and topics at BenchmarkPortal.com. Then click on Call Talk where you'll find over eight seasons of this show. From all of us at Benchmark Portal, keep those headsets steady and your fingers ready 
This is Alan Pockpotter signing out. Have a great day.